up people uh, welcome back to my channel and uh, I really thank you very 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 much for staying tuned and for watching my contents and I also thank you for subscribing that mean a lot to me all right and yet I come up with a uh, yet another informative uh, uh, video and Today we are talking about components that make up uh, automatic changeover switch. Uh, I'm very sure, uh, friends, you know, uh, the, you must be knowing the existence of this uh, changeover switch and you've heard about it because wherever you stay, uh, whichever office you work for, uh, when the normal power from your local utility company uh, sheds, uh, then you will have to definitely have a backup power, which uh, could be a generator, could be an inverter, but the mechanism of changing over from one power to another power, it's when we introduce an automatic changeover, uh, because you don't really want uh, to keep on going doing that manually. Yes, because you probably you have most important things to, uh, to do. Okay, now we'll jump in just now to look at these components. I'm very sure uh, you've already seen, uh, you know one of the components because you've learned and uh, seen uh, some of these changeovers. We have money changeovers. By the way, I did a video about money changeover. I'll link it up here uh, in the card and you'll be able to watch that if you didn't. Okay, now you probably know about the contactors and uh, there is just more than a contactor. We have got um, so many other small devices that are very crucial and important in the change of our system. All right, let's show you. First, you know about the contactor. Uh, and uh, this is a, a 26 amp contactor. Let me say that's your demand. That's your overall current. This will be supplying you. The most important thing here at rate your current it should be the contactor because it's the biggest device in there or component that you will be carrying the burden all the burden all your demands in your installation it will be this that you carry all that so you must size it properly because uh, you don't want to regret that now this is a mechanical switch uh, I talked about contactor uh, in more details. I also link the card. Uh, I'll link, put a link in the card up here, so you check it out. This is a mechanical switch. Uh, mechanical in the sense that uh, it, it has got a solenoid in here, uh, which pulls uh, the mechanical uh, contacts to lock to complete the circuit because it's normally in the open circuit so you supply it power it closes so this is the number one component that you'll be needing of course you're going to need a pair for this particular uh, topic we are on components that make up automatic changeover really professional automatic changeover by the way you will need two of these the type the brand doesn't really matter all what you need to have is make sure that uh, your contactor is four pole and you have got some auxiliaries here because you will need them. Okay, now the second thing we'll be talking about something called a phase failure. Phase failure is one thing that you don't want to leave out in your circuit, especially in this automatic changeover. Uh, this phase failure, actually I also talked about phase failure, I have a full video that talk about phase failure, how it works. I also link the same up here. So don't forget to check it, it out. Now, this phase failure, it's part of the component that we incorporate in our changeover. Let me tell you what it does. The thing here, it's a, a three phase phase failure. So you'll have to feed in all the three phases. You feed in the three phases, you tap them from, from the incoming. So you feed them here. And then this device, when you switch on your changeover, it will receive all the three phases. So when to receive the three phases, it will detect the, the availability of the phases. And 
it will switch on the circuit. So if you look at the circuit, I'll, by the way, I'll link the circuit at the end of the video. You will have uh, to look at it. So you feed in the three, all the three phases, and those three phases are being detected by this. If one phase is missing, definitely the circuit won't go on. So this one will basically help you to pro to protect your, your installation, because perhaps in your installation you have many circuits, especially when you have a, a many story building whereby uh, you've divided the circuits according to the demand and you you have balanced all the phases. So when you do that, uh, it means that uh, if one phase or one of your fuses blow in, in your power room or at the transformer, uh, you definitely lose one. So you don't want another part of the building having power and the other another part. But most important today is your drives, your motor drives. A motor would burn because of single phasing. There is no motor that survives during signal phasing. So this one will help you. If one phase blacks out, this will switch off the circuit. So this is one very important device in our circuit. Okay, now the next device in our, we incorporate in our circuit, it's a timer. And uh, this timer, it, we must have two, by the way because remember this is a changeover so we need you need two pieces in your contactor though the phase monitor is only one and it only monitor the main phases the main power phases because for the generator uh, in its card they have already incorporated all that the phase monitor and all that other stuff they have incorporated on the generator in modern generator hope that's what if you were planning to set up this stuff to hope that's what you'll be using now all right so this is a timer and uh, this timer the reason why we put it there is uh, normally when your power comes back we don't need uh, we, we don't need abrupt changeover of, of power for example if your circuit or if your changeover switch has been running on uh, a backup generator uh, and now your powers come back so if your normal power is back uh, then we don't want that sudden changeover. That's why you put this timer such that it can delay. Uh, it can delay the main contactor or the main power from coming in. So uh, normally the, uh, the timer is here in second. You can time it in seconds, uh, three seconds, thirty seconds, three minutes. It depends on what you need or how you're designing your circuit, basically. So this will help you to delay. Uh, such that you don't have that abrupt changeover. Now, equally so, if uh, if your power sheds, and then your generator starts automatically. So we don't want uh, the moment the generator starts, because remember the generator will need some time to attain its maximum speed, and you know that's where we get the operating frequency. So it means that uh, if you don't have this incorporated in your circuit, it means that when the speed is low of the generator, the whole burden of that load will be engaged and that's not good for first of all for your generator and also for some of the, the loads that you, you might have in your installations that's why you need this now for the generator you can delay it for maybe 30 seconds so 30 seconds is enough for the generator to have attained its maximum speed and then we have the frequency of 50 hertz that we really that it's most of our devices operate on okay now the other thing also you will need in your circuit it's the lily and this is not the overhead lily this lily actually it's uh, operates uh, similarly like a contactor but it has um, more different role than a contactor and it's very important now let me tell you what we do now we have this timer that i've talked about earlier and this timer remember that it's supposed to supply the contactor it should be supplying the contactor because it's incorporated in the circuit now when power goes and then um, the generator starts you know uh, this timer will uh, immediately supposed to supply because it has already delayed the contactor and then I want to supply your contactor what happens is, is that if you let this supply your contactor with power 
it won't do it for long because they have very thin plates and this contacts some of the changeover that we're talking about around 200 amps or 250 amps uh, changeover and using this timer to supply that coil the coil is around 150 amps dude it can't work this thing will blow and it's very important in the circuit so what we do we introduce this lily this lily it has got contacts that he can uh, that he can withstand really the current of that contact at the 150 if that's what you're using you know now what we do we make this timer supply the really and then this really it's the one that will supply our contactor by the way remember this really has got contactor num uh, contacts normally open and normally close there are a number of them so that's why it's very very useful the second thing that we use this area for is a for auto, uh, for automatic auto interlock auto interlock means that some of these uh, two contacts we don't want them to be coming in when the other one is engaged it's very dangerous for for the power you, you know that so what we do for this we pass through all these contactors each contactor pass through each sorry no uh, i mean each leader because we'll have two of them in the circuit so one contactor uh auxiliary will pass through this and then the other contactor also pass through another one so i will show in the circuit at the end of this video so this will protect your installation will, will protect your system from blowing out but also to supply your contactor very well hope you understood what this is but i'll link everything in more detail in the description each and every device we talked about here all the information will be in the description that I have talked about here now we have another thing that supposed to be a breaker you're going to have these single breakers four of them you'll need four of them the three breakers will be supplying your will be supplying your phase monitor so i told you earlier that your phase monitor you feed it with three phases that's red yellow blue and then after you do that before the phase failure you will have to connect in, in between you put this that very important especially because anyway if you need to do some maintenance or you need to check your you can use this one to switch off switch on and then you see if everything works perfectly you need this then the fourth one it will be for the overall control okay the overall this uh like like i told you earlier i, I went for a break the the this is the fourth one that's supposed to break the entire circuit so there's supposed to be four contactors okay now the other thing is have what we call panel indicator lights like what you're seeing in the picture right now that's the way the panel supposed to you know look like you, you need this one four of them and one of them will be showing main available and then the other one will be showing manual load then the third one will be showing gen available and the fourth one will be gen on load so you need this one to tell you every time if power is not there one will be off or to tell you that uh, your load uh, your system is on load on utility power or, or or the generator power these are very important uh so there is uh, another thing that uh, I, I will t talk about which you're supposed to be seeing in the picture right now it's called a mechanical contact i talked about uh, automatic i talked about uh, automatic interlock uh, so now we have also the mechanical interlock those are double protection for avoiding these power to powers to meet in case they have to but we normally put all those measures so mechanical interlock it's that that you're seeing in, in, in the picture uh, though fortunately I don't have it here I also show it to you in my panel uh, but it's that and its purpose is uh, this is a contactor normally all the contactor they have this they have this space here so when you're joining two contactors together you have you have to connect in between two contactors so that means that uh, if one contactor runs it will push it down and then you press the second contactor manually with your hand it will never get engaged but of course with if you had only automatic uh, interlock if you pushed 
another contact, it would definitely go in. Yeah. So we don't want their devils. So even if a their devil was in my power room and he tried to do that, things won't go haywire just because we have this. The other thing that uh, I'll need to talk about, maybe you also need the auto cables. You also definitely, these are just uh, auto cables, these are just small cables around 1.5 or below 1.5 because they are auto cables. They only supply your, the coils of each and every uh, component that I've showed you around. So you should also have the auto cable. Now, the other thing also that we can talk about, it's uh, it's uh, the bypass. Uh, I hope you've heard about uh, the bypass. The bypass is a very big component, a switch. The picture is uh, probably just seeing it right now. Uh, it helps you. Normally, some people, you know, don't have it, don't really incorporate it in their system, but it's very important. Now, the bypass help us, especially during the maintenance of the changeover. Because just imagine you have only a changeover, and then maybe one contactor coil has blown, and you need to change. And uh, this changeover, it's maybe in a very busy area, like a mall old uh, particular office or a speed or so what do you do because during the maintenance of that of the changeover y y there is no way that uh, one power will be there that maybe you're changing a, a main contactor so a generator contactor will be there running no the total power all the power inside the panel will be off so if you had what we call a bypass you would definitely turn a bypass and it bypasses the power from the changeover and then it goes straight to your control but yes so that's what generally uh, happens so normally now professionally professionally when you're setting up a changeover automatic changeover it should have a bypass because you must put uh, maintenance in consideration yes and then you don't inconvenience uh, 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 people I think we've talked about everything but maybe the one last thing I'll talk about is uh, why it's called automatic changeover. This changeover, uh, you know most of the generators, we have generators that are open circuit start or short circuit start. So they really, I showed you uh, it, uh, the two release. So I showed you one in the side of the, the main power. What happens is, is that if your generator is a short circuit start, and that means that we connected uh, the two cables, that's the auto cable from your generator inside the really of the main power. So we'll put it in the normally closed uh, contacts. So that means that during normal operation, remember the relay is energized, so the normally closed contacts are, are open. So if power goes, that means that those one they will close and they will short. Remember, our generator is a short circuit. Then they will take the signal back, and our generator will start. So basically, that's the science behind that. But I thank you very much, very, very, very much uh, for watching. And uh, please don't forget to subscribe and to like and to comment. And bye. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye.